Hello, Max and G7M here, and this video will demonstrate uh, connecting an RF kit RF2K Plus to an Elecraft K4. Now, in this demonstration, the RF2K Plus has been upgraded uh, with the RF2K S controller. So just to make that clear, and this is as of July 27th, I, I made the video here. And on the RF kit amplifier with the, you know, the newer controller, we're using the G140C172 latest and greatest software in the RF kit. Now, by the way, okay, there's firmware in the RF kit technically, right? There's a controller board that uses firmware. We like to call it firmware. But the CAT control software is all running on a Raspberry Pi 4. And so the software there that we'll be demonstrating that the RF kit amplifier uses is actually the interface is using Hamlib, common Hamlib software that abstracts CAT control interfaces to multiple rigs. It's the same uh, software that WSJT, for example, uses to connect all the different rigs out there uh, via CAT control or TCP IP or whatever. Anyway, so just to make that clear. So there's two things we're going to do here, and um, if your attention span is really short, this video probably isn't for you. Um, but keep in mind, in with YouTube, you can use keyboard shortcuts to jump ahead 10 seconds or back 10 seconds using the J and L keys. You can also pause with the spacebar or the K key, um, or you can jump ahead 5 seconds or back 5 seconds with the left and right arrow keys. So jump around, you know, do what you need to do. You can speed up the video too if I'm going too slow. But um, this will definitively, for my setup anyway, based on what I'm doing here, it will demonstrate. It will actually demonstrate rather than provide a bunch of conjecture around how you do this. And there's two things I'm going to show. The first one is connecting uh, directly from the RF kit amplifier to the physical RS-232 port on the back of the K4. So if you're looking at the front of the K4, it's the, you know, the 9-pin RS-232. It's a female um, port on the back left side looking from the front of the RF or the uh, K4. And so we'll demonstrate that. But the second part we'll demonstrate using Win for K3, or excuse me, Win for K4 Suite to do the same thing. Now there's there's a little bit of confusion and, and um, one requires a null modem cable interface and one doesn't. So let's start off with directly connecting the RF kit amplifier to the K4. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize. We're going to pull up some other windows here. So here we've got um, the actual screen output, real-time output of the RF kit amplifier. And then I've got an HDMI capture going on uh, for uh, the K4. And so down here you got the K4, right? If I tune the K4, you're going to see what's happened going on there. And we're going to go ahead and minimize this. And I'm also going to pull up another camera just to make this crystal clear, hopefully. And I'm going to turn on this camera here and make me a little bit smaller here. I've got to be careful to keep things straight. So what we got over here, and uh, the exposure here is going to be a little, little jerky here. So again, we're going to start off this is directly connecting the RF kit to the K4. So now with the RF kit on the back of the amplifier, there is, you know, a standard USB connection here. What is the A off the top of my head? And so what you need is a good quality FTDI chipset uh, USB to serial port adapter, which I'm holding in my hand, right? This is one end and this is the other end, okay? And uh, I'm looking up here because I'm looking at my recording of the video here. So you simply plug this end into the back of the RF kit amplifier. And then, of course, you have this end going in to the um, L-Craft K4. So now if the cable was long enough, I've got my amplifier on the right side and I've got my K4 on the left side of my operating position. I could just plug this cable right here directly into that port on the back of the Elcraft K4. It's a straight through connection. Let me make that really crystal clear. 
you go straight into the K4. You do not need a null modem crossover from pin 2 to pin 3, uh, vice versa on the other end of the K4. If you hook up a null modem adapter to this cable and plug that into the K4, it simply won't work. Okay, so that's key. So what I'm going to do, since my K4 is further away, <laughs> I have a uh, straight through, effectively, um, a straight through serial cable that I made that only passes the pins 2 and 3, which is transmit and receive, and the ground connection. Those are the only pins connected. So let's not go off on uh, the RTS and DTR. It has nothing to do with this. Okay, RTS and DTR, don't even consider it, right? It's not used here. So just to make that clear. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to, um, you know, plug this together. And if I can get the, there we go, plug that together like that. And so now I've got the other end connected directly into the back of the K4. All right, so now let's come up here to the software. And if I go into, get my mouse cursor down. So you can see the cursor here over on the upper right here, right? I'm recording in 4K resolution, so I, hopefully this is big enough. So if I go into the menu now of the amplifier and the interface is set to cat up here, and then I click on the cat tab. I can specify that this is an Elecraft K4 at 38400 baud. And um, I click test, and that's not working. So now let's come down to the uh, K4 now. Just to be sure, I'm going to go into the menu here. And this is set to 38.4. Going to unlock that. Change it around, 384, close it, we're out of the menu here, go back up. I gotta change the mouse, the, the, the mouse I'm using here. So let's test again here. This should be working right now. Oh, wait a minute. Ha! See? What did I do wrong here? <laughs> Stand by. I've got to plug the other end of the the USB cable into the back of the, the uh, RF kit. So here we go. I'm going to stand up. I'm going to plug this into the back of the RF kit. Imagine that. Okay. Okay, so now the USB cable is plugged into the back of the RF kit amplifier and I click on test and lo and behold it's a freaking miracle it's working okay um, so so does that this should make sense right it's just as though I plugged in the end of the USB to serial adapter into the back of the K4 no no modem required it's straight through right into the back of the K4 now um, I have always used Win4 K3 suite back in the when you know I was using my K3, and with the K4 I have always used Win4 K4 suite to do this. Now what I'll demonstrate after we're done here is that you cannot use the Elecraft K4 setting uh, if you're using a virtual K4 from Win4 K4 suite. So anyway, needless to say, we're going direct to the K4. I'm going to click save close and here we are we see cat up here and if I tune you know down here you're now gonna see uh, me tuning the rig and look up here it's tracking uh, the rig directly and let me go back into the menu here I'm gonna grab the other mouse here or I could I could touch use the touch screen uh, I want to point out the C DTR and RTS are set to none in this case right so only one device right is going to be able to have that port open on the K4 so um, you're not going to be able to do PTT or CW through DTR RTS here um, yeah, I mean maybe you could wrinkle up some cable to do that um, using a separate serial port hooked up to the same connector but anyway for this demonstration we're only we're not doing anything with DTR and RTS 
the DTR and RTS lines on the connector, you know, the physical connector on the back of the K4. So we could change the baud rates. I've tested different baud rates. In this case, I'm using 38.4 K baud. So, um, I mean, that's it. This is not rocket science. Um, however, let me go back here. Back in the day, since we're using the hand lib, um, I could never get the Elecraft K3 setting to work on my K3. Um, but I'm sure the newer software, uh, RF Kit, um, Reinhardt, or the developers that do the software, may have updated to a newer hand lib that's working now. So if I go back to the interface here, when we're going direct, I can actually use the Kenwood TS480 that works fine too. And so, um, just to make that clear, they both work, it doesn't matter. So there, I saved, now I'm using the Kenwood TS480 closed. It, it doesn't matter, right? The software, the Hamlet software is pulling the K4. We do not need to turn on auto data. Okay, l let's just make sure that's clear. Uh, right, we don't need to set this um, here. Um, the auto, auto info, excuse me, it's up here. This setting. This can just be normal. It doesn't need to be auto info where the device is only, you know, reading the data coming from the K4 rather than pulling it. The RF kit with Hamlib is pulling the K4, which works fine. So there we go. That that makes that pretty clear now. So, you know, anyone that's struggling with this, make sure you've got an FTDI chipset, a USB adapter plugged into the back of the RF kit amplifier. Make sure you've got a straight through cable direct into the back of um, the Elecraft K4. Okay, and um, ideally questions about this really belong, I suppose, on the um, uh, the RF kit uh, groups I/O group. So now, now that I've demonstrated that, I'm going to unplug. Now we we want to demonstrate using a, a a virtual K4 port, and that gets it gets a little confusing. I've got a whole other video on that with the K3, but the the uh, uh, principles still apply here. So now I'm going to unplug from the back of the K4, okay, this cable over here. And um, you, you can't see it here, but the, the, the cable now, I'm going to plug into another USB to serial adapter that's plugged into my PC. So using Win for K4 Suite, we need two serial adapters. Right? Well, we need a software controlled serial adapter plugged into your PC that is going to present a virtual K4 CAT interface to the RF kit amplifier. So the other end of that green cable now um, I'm hooking up in a null modem fashion and I'm plugging that into a COM port, a physical COM port that's a COM port to USB adapter going into my PC and I'm going to stand up and do this. You can see my my uh, fat belly there. And that now is plugged into COM port 6 on my PC. All right. So if I go into the, um, let's see here. Let's get out of that. So if I go into the device manager here, you're probably not going to be able to see this. But I have a bunch of COM ports here on my PC. It will be connected into COM port 6 right here. So now... Let's go back up here, looking at this. So, just to be clear, right, this little guy here is now connected to effectively a null modem adapter that's going into COM port 6, which is a separate US, USB to serial adapter on my PC where I'm doing this recording. And it's null modem. So, pin 3 on this guy is going to pin two on the other end. Pin two on the uh, is going to pin three on the other side. Okay, vice versa. It's a null modem connection now, effectively. It's not straight through. Um, if I were to plug this cable directly in to the USB serial adapter that's on the PC, it wouldn't work. You'd, you'd have to use a null modem adapter, which I've effectively done on the other end of this, this particular cable here. So, okay. So that's connected up now. So now I need to start up. You can see also on the screen here, you can see here, 
that the RF kit has switched into universal um, frequency detection mode. So if I were to key the amplifier, it would sense what frequency I'm on because there is no cat data. So now I'm going to start up win for k 4 suite and let's get that going. And you'll notice that it just kicked into cat control. So now it's sensed that there's cat data coming from port 6 on my PC that's connected into the USB to serial port adapter that's plugged into the back of the RF kit amplifier. So if I go to, so, so um, let me turn off this so you can see Win for K4 Suite. Let me turn off this camera. Okay, and this is going to be kind of small here. Um, and I'm not going to zoom in. I'll just describe what's going on here. So if I go to settings in Win for K4 Suite and uh, you go over to the um, third party software hardware, I'm using cat port 5. It's a virtual port. You've got to think of this as a virtual port. And it's connected to COM6 right here, COM6. And I've got the baud rate set to 38.4 because I have the baud rate set to 38.4 in the RF kit software. And that's connected. So I'll just cancel out here. So now what you're going to see here is I tune the RF kit rig, right? You're seeing Winfrey K4 Suite, which, by the way, in this case, has a TCP IP connection to my Elecraft K4, right? So it's directly connected to Elecraft K4 via TCP IP. Or I could use one of the um, USB serial ports that's built in to the K4, right? There's three serial ports. You got two USB serial ports presented to the PC with one USB connection. And then you have that physical uh, serial port on the K4. There's three serial ports you can deal with. All right, but I'm using the TCP IP connection, which is a beautiful thing, right? Get, get, get rid of a serial port. So that leaves me with two USB serial ports to interface to other software um, when I'm, you know, playing ham radio contests or DXing or whatever. Um, so I hope that makes this crystal clear what is going on. Now, one thing I wanted to point out that is um, in the menu back here. Let's go back here to the RF kit. Go to the menu, go to the interface. Uh, if you remember, I switched over to the Kenwood TS480, right? It's working using a virtual K4 um, interface. And so if we change this to an Elecraft K4, I don't know what's going on here, but it doesn't work. It simply does not work. And that's been the case even back in the K3 days. And maybe it's something to do with the way the data is presented on the virtual K4 inter interface here via Win4 K4 suite. I don't know, but it will not work. You can see that we're kicked back into universal mode. So to make it work through Win4 K4 suite, I've got to go, excuse me, not here. Um, I've got to go back into the RF kit software, go to the interface. Go to cat, and I need to switch it back to Kenwood TS 480. I click test, it works. I click save, close. We're now tracking. You see, I'm changing the frequency down here. You're seeing the frequency change up here. Um, that's it. So I hope that helps. Uh, don't get confused. If you think through it, it's not that bad. Um, but the, the confusion, I think, comes in with the RF kit having a USB port on the back that's connected directly to the, R, the Raspberry Pi 4 in the RF kit. To get that physical connection, you've got to connect a USB to serial port adapter that then goes back in directly into the K4 if you're using the physical serial port on the back of the K4. Or if you're using uh, Win for K4 Suite, you've got to have another USB to serial port adapter on your PC, and you connect that to the physical USB to serial port adapter on the RF kit via no modem. You've got to cross pins two and three. So uh, thanks for watching. If you like the video, give me the thumbs up. And obviously, this is my setup. Your mileage may vary. Um, but I um, hope to hear you on the bands. And um, we'll end with that. I'll get this posted in 7.3. Everyone, this is Max, NG7M. Bye.